Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, today I'm, I'm going to talk about uh, the uh, cost of investments, many subjects. Cost of investments. Uh, short selling. Uh, the regulations of financial markets. And if we have time, we'll talk about the uh, IBOs, initial public offerings. Uh, before starting our uh, meeting today, uh, I had a question in the morning uh, about wh what means uh, liquidity. Uh, liquidity, any stock to be liquid, it has two conditions. Uh, the speed and the ease. So we can uh, define liquidity as the ease and the speed to convert any security or any asset into cash with no significant impact on the price. Okay? With no significant Im impact on the price. Maybe the price may drop down for, for a little bit, but the, the significant uh, implication of the price is, uh, is ignored. Uh, so this is the, uh, the meaning of liquidity. Let's start by the cost of investment. <coughs> uh, any investment has two main costs. Uh, the implicit cost and the explicit cost. So the implicit cost is hidden yeah. and uh, represented as the bid ask spread. The spread. Uh, the explicit cost as a commission. We will take two examples. One with only spread, and the second with the commission and the spread. And to do the calculations about the uh, about the investment cost. Uh, let's take uh, this example here. Uh, the bid ask the bid price is a 20 and the ask price is a 20.5 if the investor want to buy the investor buy at 20.5 so this is the investor buy now the investor if he or she bought at 20.5 implicitly he paid 0.5 which is the difference between the bid and ask spread. In other ways, if I ask you one little question, at what price the investor start to make a profit? The investor start to make a profit, we have two options. You either say it, when the bid become equal to the ask, so in this case, the bid will be 20.5 and the ask will be 21. In this case, because we want to sell, if the price goes to 20.5, in this case, we cover, we cover the, the 0.5, okay? You have this option to tell this. What we've done, we did like this, a 20.5 become, the ask become like in the bid, and the bid 20.5, and we calculate the difference, which is 0 0.5, to the, to the ask and become 20. This is one option. Let's take the second option. You ask yourself, uh, the ask price is 20.5 and the bid is 20. What is the difference? Is okay. You add 0 0.5, and you add 0 0.5 to this. So 21, 20.5, 20 and you have here a 20, a 21. We start to make a profit when the bid price becomes 20.5. Okay. If we did a round trip, and I explained before what it means round trip. If we buy and sell at the same time. Okay, uh, we hold 
a transaction cost equal point, point 0.50 or point 0.5. Uh, in this example, we ignore the presence of commission. Okay. Now let's to consider the commission and the bid ask spread. The same question. Considering that, considering the investor have to pay or has to pay sixty dollar as a minimum. commission as a minimum commission for each 100 shares and for each transaction what it means for each transaction the investor has to pay uh, a commission in the round trip for the buying and for the selling. Okay, my, my question is now, at what a price the investor start to make a profit? If he or she is starting as a buyer at 20.5, at what time or at what price he is starting to make profits? 20.5. 20 point, okay, how, how we answer this? 8.5. Uh -huh. Okay. So 60 divided 100, we have 0. 0.6. Okay. Add it to the ask price. Sorry, to the bid. To the ask price, 20.5 plus 0. 0.60, 21.1, which is wrong. Okay. Uh, we add uh, 0.6 uh, twice. Yes, exactly. Uh, 0.12. Yes. Uh, 21. 0. 0.6. 21. 0. 0.7. 21. 0. 0.7. 21. 0. 0.7. 21. 0. 0.7. 21. 0. 0.7. 21. 0. 0.7. 21. 0. 0.7. 21. 0. 0.7. 21. 0. 0.7. 21. 0. 0.7. 21. 0. 0.7. 21. 0. 0.7. 21. 0. 0.7. 21. 0. 0.7. 21. 0. 0.7. 21. 0. 0.7. 21. 0. 0.7. 21. 0. 0.7. 21. 0. 0.7. 21. 0. 0.7. 21. 0. 0.7. 21. 0. 0.7. 21. 0. 0.7. 21. 0. 0.7. 21. 0. 0.7. 21. 0. 0.7. 21. 0. 0.7. 21. 0. 0.7. 21. 0. 0.7. 21. 0. 0.7. 21. 0. 0.7. 21. 0. 0. 7. 21. 0. 0. 7. 21. 0. 0. 7. 21. 0. 0. 7. 21. 0. 0. 7. 21. 0. 0. 7. 21. 0. 0. 7. 21. 0. 0. 7. 21. 0. 0. 7. 21. 0. 0. 7. 21. 0. 0. 7. 21. 0. 0. 7. 21. 0. 0. 7. 21. 0. 0. 7. 21. 0. 0. 7. 21. 0. 0. 7. 21. 0. 0. 7. 21. 0. 0. 7. 21. 0. 0. 7. 21. 0. 0. 7. 21. 0. 0. 7. 21. 0. 0. 7. 21. 0. 0. 7. 21. 0. 0. 7. 21. 0. 0. 7. 21. 0. 0. 7. 21. 0. 0. 7. 21. 0. 0. 7. 21. 0. 0. 7. 21. 0. 0. 7. 21. 0. 0. 7. 21. 0. 0. 7. 21. 0. 0. 7. 21. 0. 0. 7. 21. 0. 0. 7. 21. 0. 0. 7. 21. 0. 0. 7. 21. So when the bid becomes, when the bid becomes 20.70, we start make a profit. And if the bid becomes 21.70, then they ask, how much they ask? Uh, 22.20. 22.20. Okay, let's do deconstruct this. We have three solutions, and we end up with the with the same results. Okay, let's deconstruct this this one. The first things: if you want to buy 100 shares, 100 shares, 100 shares. At what price you will buy the 100 shares? At bid or at the ask? Ask. ask. So times 20.5. How much? Uh, 205. 200 or 2000? Oh, no, no. 2000? 2000. 50. Yes. Okay, you will pay $60 for each 100 plus 60. 2110. Okay? Now, this is for the buying. When you sell, you have to pay how much? 60. Mm -hmm. Plus 60 when you sell 2170. Because you are buying and selling 100 shares, just divided them by 100, you end up with 21.70, which is this result. Okay, this is the second answer. Let's take the third answer. By considering the implicit cost and the commission. Okay. Did you get this? Did you write that? 
Okay, write this. This is round trip. Yes, you, you have to, to pay the commission. In this case, it's a round trip. What it means round trip? You buy and sell. So the first sixty dollar here for the buy, and this sixty dollar is the sell. This is the buying price, and this is the selling price. The selling price considering the two things: the commission and the bid ask spread. Okay. Let's go to the third methods okay instead of doing all of these things just we can do it like this how much you what is the cost that you hold you hold two costs the first one is the spread and the commission now what is the, the spread is 0.5 and what is the commission is 1.2 because you are doing round the trip. 0 0.5 plus 1.2 is 1.70. 1.70, add them to the bid price, which is a 20, you end up with a 21.70. It's, it's a magic. You see? Uh, you can do this for the ask price. We can do this, the fourth methods. Okay. Because the, already, the ask is already reflected the, the spread. We don't need to add the spread again. You start 20.5 because the, 20, the 0.5 is already in the ask. It's implicitly in the ask. You just add up 1.20, which is the commission. You have 21.70. Okay? It's same. Because already the ask reflects the uh, the commission, the, the, the spread. 20, 20 plus 0.5, it's just 20.5. From where the 0.5 coming? The 0.5 is the, the difference between bid ask and spread, and it considered as a cost, as a transaction cost to the investor and profit to the dealer. And I, I explained this before. Okay? Uh, try to do these things uh, by yourself, uh, considering the first things if uh, uh, investors pay commission and if the investors pay no commission. Generally speaking, in the currencies, uh, uh, investors pay no commission in the currencies. Mm -hmm. But in the stocks, uh, investors pay commission. Mm -hmm. Okay? So the pay commission plus to the bid ask spread, which is the uh, uh, the profits of of the dealer. Now, uh, uh, not all investors pay the same commission and the same bid ask spread. It depends of the institution. For instance, uh, the brokers provide uh, <laughs> things known as a discount broker. Discount broker uh, suggests commission and bid ask spread. Uh, uh, below the, the formal and the standard bid ask spread suggested to the normal investors. For instance, if you acquire the same, uh, the same price, but you are a large institution, you are not individual institutions, uh, you may have like this, 20.1. 20 20 and maybe there is no commission or the commission is 30 for each 100. Because you remember in the, f in the chapter one, I, I said uh, the, minimum, uh, the minimum number of shares you can buy and sell is 100 shares, mm -hmm. up to 10,000. Yes. If investors exceed the 10,000, no. is a subject of negotiation between the dealer or brokers and the investors. And in this case, they discuss upon the bid ask spread and the commission. And this is, we call this as a discount broker. Again, discount broker suggests different commission, different spreads, and different uh, 
uh, prices to encourage the uh, block trades. Okay, and this is uh, known in the in business and the economics economies of scale. In the economies of scale, because you are buying and selling large number of or large volume of stocks, you are subject of having discount from the broker. Okay, any question in the in this? Now, wh what is the impact of uh, of the transaction co of both cost of the bid ask spread? and the commission on the investments. If the, inv if the dealer widen the bid ask spread, it means the investors hold more cost. The more space between bid ask spread, the more cost we hold uh, in, in the transactions. And again, for the commission is, uh, is the same. <clears throat> in other way, if we have widened like this, 1826 for instance, it's a big space between the bid and ask spread. It means uh, it costs a lot the investors to trade in, in this. I asked my students uh, in the previous meeting uh, to collect information uh, about the, uh, the prices, the currency price in the markets. Uh, what we observe, observe there is a narrow space between the, between the dealers and in Gaza Strip markets. Uh, the majority of them located between $3.99 dollar against shekel and $3.97. Uh, it's just two points, two points uh, difference between the bid and ask spread, which is, uh, it means the amount of cost or list cost can hold by the investor. If you want to judge on the efficiency of the dealers, you just Look at the compare okay. between the bid ask spread for each dealer with others. Mm -hmm. In this way, you can compare between them to what extent they are efficient in managing their, uh, their funds. Less okay? Spread. Less spread is yes, this cost. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, let's talk about the short term. I know I did, I talk about the short sell, but now I focus on advanced things in the short selling. So please be attention to what I'm going to talk about the short selling. Okay? Anyone explain to me what short selling? Okay? And why, why people use short selling? Okay? Why, 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 people, why, why people do selling? Why people do selling? Why? Because the prices will go down. They expect. They expect the price will go down. Okay. So the, the first step is borrowing the, the uh, stocks. Borrowing the stocks from whom? Dealer. Okay. Uh, do you think this is a free services by the dealer? No. 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 So, what they can do this? Okay. This is this is good starting. When investors are starting to trade in any account, uh, they have to put collateral. Yes. Okay. And as I explained before, the collateral is like a margin, is a portion or a percentage amount of the total investment. If you want to, to trade $3,000 and we have to pay 60% of them, so we just time 60% from the $3,000. So in the first things, the investor has to pay the collateral. The, this is the first. It, it means to start up the business. Okay, then as she said, we borrow. But the main arguments behind the short selling that the investors predict that the price or the market will be bearish markets. Okay? So this is the, the this is the idea. Okay, fine? Okay, what what next then? then after selling after borrowing they selling. Selling three this uh, let's for, for instance they borrow one hundred shares. They sell selling things that 
selling the 100 shares uh, to the uh, in the market. Uh, suppose the price at which they sell is thirty dollar. Okay, suppose this. Okay. Selling things that they don't have. They sell. Yes, and then buying. Okay, so buy it back. Buy the stock back at X price. Now we will focus on the X price. Okay. Uh, if the price go up and if the price go down. Because we don't know. <coughs> Maybe the price goes against the perception of the investors, or the price may go to the according to uh, to your perception. Uh, let's start by according to us. The price will go down. We don't have problem in, in this case. <coughs> if the price goes to twenty five dollar, uh, we earn how much? Five dollars. Okay. Five dollar, but we don't have real five dollar because we, we need to pay the commission and blah blah blah. I will leave this unanswered for your uh, for your assignment. Okay. Now, if unfortunately the price goes up, uh -huh. uh, it goes to thirty seven, for instance, and it continues to go up. The price. You sell at 30 and you have to buy it back because you want okay. to pay back the stocks to the dealers. You don't have any option, particularly if your, st your stock's time is retired. You know what it means, it's expired. Because you have to hold the stock for a particular period of time and if this particular, if this time is about to retire, in this case, in this case you have to to exercise, you have to buy it back. If unfortunately the price is rallies to the top, okay, uh, you have two options to buy them back or you may use a stop. A stop buy or sell? A stop buy order. You will do stop buy order. Okay? And this stop by order is calculated based on to what extent the investors are bearing risk. 10%, 20%, 5%, it depends on the investor uh, criteria. Okay? Uh, now, we have uh, to ask a question. And this is a question, I've been asked this question before, but what we want to go in details about this question. Uh, at what time? the investor uh, go to the short selling. Okay? I, I already answered this, but I go to in details, in advanced details. When the investor go to short selling? Well, very simple. Uh, uh -huh. When the investor think that uh, the price of the stock uh, is overpriced. Okay, when? It's, it's, it's fine. Yeah. It's an optic. Opti oh, yeah. Okay. When the price is in optic, mm -hmm. uh, for instance, when the, uh, the oil price was an, at 120, it's opportunity to do short selling. The price is okay, like doing zigzagging, and now in the top. This known as optic. This is optic. <clears throat> this is more preferable for the investors to do short selling. Well, this is one option. The second option, the investors, they may calculate the short selling or short interest ratios. Short interest ratios. What it means, short interest ratios? Short interest ratios. Short interest ratios, they divided the number. number of short selling, okay, short selling, <coughs> divided by the number of shares outstanding. If the outcome, if the output is greater than one, it means more short selling in, in, the, in, the, in the markets. If less than one, 
less short selling in the markets. And by using this equation, people predict that the price will go down. But we have counter arguments. This is not as easy as, you, uh, as we think. Because <clears throat> let's consider this, uh, uh, th this example. <clears throat> if we have in zero time, when the price at, a, at the peak, which is at the top, okay, this guy, this gentleman, decided to take the position, to short position. Then he started the, to take the short and expect the price will go down. And the time is moving, another man is coming and say, oh yes, it's, it's opportunity to take short selling. But with this guy, is about to expire his short selling, so he want to buy, to buy it back. When he want to buy it back, the price will go up. So we have two counter arguments. The first one telling that the price will go down. During the price will go down, another people, another investors going to the markets and do short selling. In this time, this guy buy back. When he or she buying back, the price will go up. So, in explanation, in explanation of short interest ratio, we have two counter arguments. The first one say, telling the the more short selling in the markets may make the price to go down. Other counter arguments say the more short selling meaning that the price will go up. Why? Why the second argument? Uh, what is the, the logic behind the second argument? The logic is going like this. When this guy, the second one, do short selling and in this period of time, the more short seller in the markets, and they want, they want to buy back. So they, this, it means they squeeze themselves, because the price will go up. And this is called the squeezing, or locked in. They squeeze themselves. Squeeze, it's like they are in the corner. Because they have to buy back. And because the more short sellers in the past, we come to the time the more buyers. In this case, they squeeze themselves and they cannot exercise. And to what extent the price may go, by, go up and they may not take the advantage of short selling. Okay? My question is, to leave this counter argument, the people who come early to the short selling benefits. get more benefits yes. when, from the people coming early to the market. Which one is right? Both arguments are right. Okay, we don't have big difference between them. The but the, the, the opportunity when you discover the price, discovering the price, and this is the uh, this is the uh, the main job of the financial experts. When we discover the price, at what time the price will go down? At what time the price will go up? Some people discover this at early stages, others they discover it at late stage stages. So people they discover it at early stages, they get benefits more from the people at the late stages. So we don't have problems in understanding these things. Okay, any further question? Okay, let's raise another question. At the time of short selling, if the company considering that we buy and sell the IBM, pay out dividends. Who will pay the dividends? Yes, we know the IBM will pay the dividends, but for whom? For the holders. But again, the short seller has to pay the dividends to the dealer, if the company pay dividends. Okay, and this is a cost. What is the argument? <clears throat> the argument when the company pay out dividends, what is the implication of the price, you know? When the company pay dividends, okay, if we have the price now 20, if the company pay dividends, what is the implication of paying out on the price? Is the price will go up or go down? Are you sure? 
This is against the financial principles. The price will go down. So when the price goes down, who gets benefits? The short seller. Think now. When the price goes down, and if the short seller will receive a dividend, so he gets benefit twice. If from the drop in the price and from the dividends. This is because the price he gets benefit, the, sorry, the, uh, the, uh, the short seller gets benefit one, either to take the, the, the dividends or to get benefits from the drop of the price. The, the financial system says, okay, the, deal, the, uh, the investor has to pay the dividends to the dealer and get benefit from the, the, the yeah, price. Right, you know. Okay, so try to revise the dividends policy and how and the implication of the pri of the dividends on the price. I know this this the, to me, meeting today is not complicated. Yes. Huh? This is what, uh, what do you think? It's life semester, you know. Okay. Uh, any question? Uh, any question before moving to the uh, to the regulations? Any question? The advantage for the dealer, only for the dividends? The dealer? Oh. Ah, the dealer has many advantages. Commission. Uh, commission, yes. bid ask spread, dividends, many things. Oh. And uh, uh, yes. if, if, if you don't, if you borrow money from him, yeah. okay? And uh, don't forget, he may provide uh, full services, give you recommendations. Uh, and they have financial analysts. Mm -hmm. They do a big job for investors. <clears throat> now, let's talk about regulation. Any question before moving to regulation? Doctor, oh. you know that the, uh, dealers can indirectly influence the price. Uh -huh. uh, so, yes. can we say that they can benefit from... Uh, Gen you, you talk about generally speaking. Yeah. Uh, not in this case. Uh, okay, I, I said about this case. They can guarantee the cost or benefit and what uh, like uh, You should defer first between the broker and the dealer. Uh, the broker is a middleman, just buying and selling. But the dealer is uh, buying and selling to his account and to the investors. Uh, the dealer trades on his account and considering that, he or she consider as a market maker. Uh, a dealer may intervene to influence on the price by the inventory. And the, the dealer has indirect uh, information or private information about the order flow because the dealer has the flow of orders because people not just the investors not just going to have uh, a market order. They uh, have a limit order, okay? And when you observing the limit orders, it means like the flow, the flow of orders. And when you just do uh, investigation for the flow of orders, you know the buyers from the sellers. Who's larger, the buyers or the sellers, or sellers larger than the buyers. In this case, you determine your position. You can play the game. There is a lovely book about uh, uh, one game in a city. And this is talk about the financial market and finance. Doctor, ah. how when the company pay dividends, the price go down? Yes. Uh, I will tell you why. Uh, however, this should be answered in the introduction in finance. But we will go to answer this why the company, when pay out dividends, the price will go down, okay? Yes. The company has two, two options. When they generate net income, to retain earnings or to pay dividends, mm -hmm. okay? That's fine. Now look at the price. This is the price. If the company decided to pay dividends, the investor will get benefits. Yes. And the 
in other ways, we are keeping the funds away from the company, away from the price. Mm -hmm. Investors take the this. Okay, so you are uh, get benefits or make the advantages to the investors, not yeah. to the company. Uh, yes. This amount available to the company will be paid to the investors. But if we desi decide to pay the retail evenings to keep the profits yes. and to, de to do investments. Mm -hmm. When we do investment, in this case, we increase price. the sales, yes. so the price will go up. Mm -hmm. But in this case, because we pay the cash out yes. of the business, so the value of the business will decrease. Yeah. This is a very short answer. But if we want to, uh, to answer this question uh, properly, we need two three meetings mm -hmm. to do calculations and to decide whether to go to dividends or to go to retain okay. earnings, or 50-50, or 30-70, or 40-60, 60-40, and so on. Okay? Uh, the regulation. Uh, in the United States, the federal uh, security laws uh, is assigned to the uh, to the brokers, dealers, investors, and they have to follow this. Uh, the uh, the dealers, brokers, even the banks, they have to generate a particular report, 10K report, 8K reports, and many reports. I'm not in the, in the case to talk about this report, but just for your uh, information to know about the, uh, the main things that focused by the regulation to what extent the company disclosed their internal and external information about the strategic level, about the industry, about the competition, about the risk, about the return, about the financial statements, about everything related to the business. If the company hides things from the investors, it means it is a subject of a particular laws and a particular uh, uh, investigation from the SEC. SEC, it means Security Exchange Committee. So the, the security SEC is important, is supervised the, uh, uh, the performance of the companies. Uh, and the companies has to apply the governance, the governance, ethics, and other regulations. Uh, in particular, after 2002, so after, yeah. after Enron Company, uh, they uh, regulate Act, Oxley Act, our Serbian Oxley Act, and was very important in that time. And they developed these acts. Uh, all companies in the United States, even in the other countries, have to apply these regulations. Uh, the main importance of, this, of these regulations that the consultant should be independent or must be independent from the auditor. And the information should be disclosed to the rest of investors, not only for a particular investors. You can go back about these, uh, uh, these uh, regulations uh, and how these regulations solve the conflict of interest between the board of directors and the managers okay, by using the agency problem. Uh, now I'm going to talk about the private placement versus initial public offerings. Uh, any question before going to, the, to discuss this? Any question? Any question? No question. Well. Done. Hmm. Okay, I have many questions. Uh, what is the difference between private placement and initial public offerings? Is any difference between them? No? What, what is the difference? Um, private uh, placement, um, uh, it has uh, uh, less uh, regulations and less uh, price and cost and less risk. Um, um, used in uh, new established or uh, for entrepreneurs funds or ah. something small firms oh okay, small firms yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. but um, public uh, has uh, uh, regulations mm. and higher costs well, well, why small investments or small business or entrepreneurs prefer to go to the 
private placement rather to the uh, borrow money from the banks. And because we, ah, we don't have to, yes. because we don't have to pay commission. <laughs> they don't have to pay commission and collateral. They don't have collateral. Yes. Uh, it is uh, at the very beginning. The business is very risky. In the initial stages of the business, the the number of failure business is greater than the number of uh, successful business. Okay. Uh, so generally speaking. Uh, for the private placement, for the private placement, the private placement uh, is generally for the entrepreneurs, um, and the majority of them uh, using the venture capital, and uh, this is like uh, a new innovation uh, capital. Uh, giving the hand to the uh, initiative people and initiative investors. Um, the criteria of this, uh, the, the business or the small business has no, no need to pay collateral or to uh, suggest collateral. Uh, no need to go the channel of the investment banks. Uh, accordingly, they don't need to pay the commission. It's a cheap uh, a channel to the small business. It's exactly the, uh, uh, we have big companies here, okay? Uh, and this private, this company, this is a small one, uh, if they decided to go to the private placement, they try to have a contact with the big companies to get, to, to take a fund from them. Yeah. The, the importance of these people or the, these uh, bank, the, these companies, they think if one of these small and new established companies pass the exam, I mean if they uh, uh, succeed. succeed in the business, uh, they may become like a big company. Mm -hmm. Like when you talk about WhatsApp or Facebook, yeah. mm -hmm. the, the majority of these branded new companies starting as a venture capital or starting as, as a small business. By using the venture capital through the big companies, it means big companies not only giving a fund for them, but contribute. But contribute. Yeah. It's giving the, their networks. Yeah. They, they give them their networks, not only the funds. And this is why the, uh, uh, this small business prefer to go through the private placement rather to go uh, to, the, to the, the banks. banks because the banks only giving them the funds, uh, not... The, the other services like the recommendations, the investment, uh, the business model, uh, the, uh, uh, the competition environment, uh, the facilitation of the, of the business. Uh, unfortunately, in the, uh, we in, the, uh, in this region, we don't have like this, uh, this uh, instruments because this is very important. Uh, for the less developed countries, um, it, it it could be, but the uh, but this business has a risk. Ha have a risk. Uh, there's no business with no risk. Uh, at the end, if we think if there is a risk, there is no investment. It means there is no investment. But the the investment generates risk. Okay, and this is the difference between the, uh, uh, the country decide to take the risk and others they sit behind and they don't want to take the risk. And let's go in details about the venture capital. It, it is not our subject, but just to give you some, some ideas about the venture capital, how they, uh, uh, they form the venture capital for the small business. Uh, the Federal Reserve Bank or the SEC the Security Exchange uh, Commission or the government uh, asking these big companies to form funds, okay? Like mutual funds, like uh, uh, venture capital funds. It's like this big box. Okay, like this bit, this box. And this box has like, you know, saving box. Uh, they contribute in this saving box. Mm. 
And this is deducted from the tax. Now we have a big amount of money in this box. If one of the small business coming asking hands, not a hand in, in the, in the is, is not a charity, because these people, they get benefit from this, because this investment. Uh, the fund is available. The, the fund is ready for the, uh, if we have five small business, S1, S2, S3, S4, or S5, and asking for the funds, uh, the venture capital may give them. But they think not all of these uh, small business will pass the exam. It could be one, it could be two, or could be zero. But they think if this one pass the exam, it will cover all of the cost, be it by the others. So in this case, they, they think uh, uh, it, it's valuable to invest in the small business because if the one succeeds, it becomes a large business. And you have a successful story by WhatsApp and Facebook, and you can see what is the, 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 the value of these companies. Okay? Any question? Mm -hmm. So you like this type of funds, venture capital. So the entrepreneurs are not suffering of having the funds because the fund is available and in the cheaper price. But just give the idea and uh, have the business model, uh, uh, have the initiative it is a step to the, uh, to, the, uh, to the business and you can start up your, your, your business. Okay. Uh, what is the, the, the benefits of, of, the, uh, of the investors, because we consider these investors, uh, they have shares. Because this small, small firms issue shares. And shares is funded by the venture capital. So they have investments in, in this. But this investment has a less condition or lower conditions comparing with the initial public offerings. Okay? As you observe, there's no mediation between the, uh, the companies and the small firms. In other, way, it's, in other words, it means there is no uh, banks, investment banks, to facilitate the... Uh, when they're issuing shares, they know these shares going to the, these companies, not for, for, for the public. And this is give... Uh, take, give the advantage to these companies. When you know uh, this small business is funded by X or by Y, it means it has uh, a prestigious position uh, between the uh, companies. Okay? For instance, if you have a project area in, in, in Palestine and you know this project is funded by IBM or funded by NASA or funded by Coca-Cola or funded by other companies or funded by Palatel or Bank of Palestine, so it's, it gives you a prestigious position, okay? Because uh, uh, these companies put this business under this investigation. Because the, the fund is not for free, okay? Uh, let's go back to the story. Uh, we have five companies out maybe 100 companies, okay? So they eliminate around 95 companies from the game and select five of them as uh, Okay, have good opportunity in the future. Okay, any question in this? No? Any question? No? Now, let's talk about the investment banks and the initial public offerings. We, we do have time. Uh, the initial public offerings. Anyone has an idea about the ideas? Initial public offerings. IBOS, Initial Public Offerings, which totally the opposite of private placement. Ah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So companies issuing shares to the uh, to the public. What, what is the process of doing this? What is the mechanism? 
of, of the link? Uh -huh. um, selling the stocks in the uh, first market. In the primary market? Primary market. Okay. Uh -huh. Going to the primary market. Yes. And who's in charge in running the primary market? T tell me the process from the, the, from the very beginning. Uh, l let's start by, uh, we have a company A, and this company A, uh, it could be uh, want to issue new shares, it could be a new company, and it could be already existed company. Yes. Uh, if we have already existed company, it's, it's fine, we don't have as much problems as we have in the uh, in the issue, new, new company issue, new because issue. in the newly established company we need to go to through a longer process we have to, to take the permissions the license the from the sec security the exchange commission and we have to pro provide the prospectus red ring and the, the initial prospectus it's a long journey uh, to to have the uh, the underwriting process. Underwriting. So before going to the investment banks, <coughs> the newly established companies they have to to take the permission from the SEC, from the Security Exchange Security Exchange Committee, uh, to underwrite the uh, number of of stocks of, of shares of stocks. And they have to provide the first thing, initial uh, prospectus. And uh, in the initial prospectus, they say they have their own com comments. Uh, they provide things known red drink. Red drink. Uh, after taking the, co the, the consideration of the SEC, and correcting, for instance, the, uh, the problems, uh, they provide the final prospectus. Some people are saying uh, the final prospectus. When we have the final prospectus, we go to the underwriting. The underwriting, it means starting to uh, have or to search for a particular investment bank. So our relationship now starting with the investment banks. But uh, sometimes the investment bank provides uh, consultation to, the, uh, to, the, to, the, to these companies. Uh, it means the investment bank could work on behalf of the company when they are dealing with a SEC. For instance, uh, they help this, the, these companies to write the prospectus, the initial prospectus, and they give them the recommendation how to apply regulations. Uh, we have details about the, uh, uh, about the legal uh, framework they have to apply when they are dealing with SEC. Dealing with a SEC is not an easy job. It, it needs a particular experience. And in the early stages of the business, they have to hire consultants. It's, 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 it's main problem in the, and when, when you have, uh, some people think, oh, I want to go public. Uh, I was one of, uh, of, of these experts uh, asking me to, uh, to be uh, as, a, as a one to see about the prospectus. When they're asking, them, oh, you do this, you have to do this, you have to do this. If you go to the SEC, they keep laughing on your work. They don't have the board of directors, for instance. They don't assign the capital. They don't tell the, the, the main objective, their strategy. The, 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 you have to, uh, to apply many forms to get the, uh, the SEC permission. It, you may take more than two years to do this job. And some people here, they want to do this job in five days. One. Five days. Oh, we have a meeting with the Ministry of X and we have our good contact. Okay, okay. in the blue lights, you will get the license. No, 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 we, I call Mr. X, I call Mr. Y, and we have a good contact, oh, we sit down with them, and we uh, have a cup, of, a, a cup of tea. Okay, if you have a cup of tea, 
of a cup of, a cup of C, you will never get the license. Because this is a regulation. Yes. And these regulations sometimes is supervised by external bodies. It could be in the United States, could be in the European countries, it could be in somewhere because they want to investigate, to check. This is public company. It is not your company. Be careful. Don't play with the public funds. This is why we are subject of a tough of regulations when we are going uh, to the public. Okay? Uh, once the, the investment banks is, is, is like a conduit, is like a channel, helping us, helping us to prepare the initial prospectus, the, the rendering, and to, uh, to update the prospectus according to the, to the regulations, and then marketing the shares. Uh, I see some. OK, I will stop here. OK? And uh, uh, have a weekend, nice weekend. Okay, have a nice weekend.